Hi, it's time for another math. Easy solution to discuss. Further into the precise definition of limits and infinity or, or horizontal asymptotes and look at example two of this example series. In my earlier video I went over this example, so we'll make sure to see that in the video link below. And now I'm gonna go over example two, which basically states use the precise definition of a limit at infinity to prove well this limit as x approaches infinity of one divided by x equals to zero right here. And, and you can see, as you can see, this one of you put in really large numbers, one divided by a large number, well, you're gonna basically get zero, that's intuitive. But to prove it with a precise definition, I'll just recap on a precise definition first. Yeah, so uh, here's a, just a recap on the precise definition of a limit at infinity. You can see more on, on, uh, more on this, I will go over in great detail in the video link below on this uh, precise definition. Basically, uh, let f be a function defined on some uh, interval a to infinity then we have limit as x approaches infinity of f of x is equal to l and, and this is the asymptote a horizontal asymptote or just a limit and this means that for every uh, del yeah, for every epsilon there is a corresponding a number n such that the difference f of x minus l the absolute value is less than this uh, epsilon whenever x is greater than n. So just make sure you watch a video uh, on this in the video link below to get a better idea. So now to, uh, to prove this using precise definition, let's just write it inside in terms of this uh, in terms of this definition. Now uh, just, just to put in the, the terms we know, f of x in this case is going to be 1 over x and yeah so that's the that's, uh, only thing and then our limit is 0. So we can just put this inside this. So to prove this function, all we have to do is, well, first of all, let's just write this down and I'll get to that uh, soon. So we'll have one over x minus zero is less than this uh, epsilon whenever we have x is greater than n right here. So to prove this, we have to basically, pr we have to prove this, uh, that this equals to zero. We have to prove that the precise definition applies and in, in to make it apply since this number is any number greater than zero is just this is just any number so this any number greater than zero so this could be anything so we know this so we have to find this n value yeah, and we need to find n and n is actually it's dependent on epsilon yeah and depends on epsilon because if you make epsilon smaller if the def if the uh, limit exists the horizontal asymptote exists then n gets really really large so now let's just rearrange uh, this one right here to simplify this because one well, one over x minus zero well we don't need to include a zero so this thing kills one over x Absolute value is less than this uh, this epsilon right here. And now, since we're we're dealing as x approaches infinity, assume x is large or greater than zero. So we just assume this. So then, one over x absolute value well it just equals to one over x because they're not just this can be positive regardless. So we need to put that in. So then, this is less than this uh, epsilon. So now, if we rearrange this for x, we get actually one over epsilon is less than equal to x right here or write it in opposite way just x is greater than one over epsilon so as you can see this is exactly this form so x is greater than epsilon so we this is actually our n value right here so we found this this is our proof and so what this is saying is that if you get epsilon really really small we're gonna get n really really large because one divided by a small number is a large number so we have Basically, uh, this is the proof right here, and I'll just uh, underline proof right here. But now, just to illustrate it better, I'll uh, I'll graph it out. Yeah. So now, if we look at the graph of one over x, well, basically on the positive side, uh, it goes something like this on the on the negative. We're not dealing with that. So we we'll just look at this side right here. That we know the limit. Well, we're trying to prove it that it's zero. As you can see from the graph, it's approaching zero. So if we have just a number uh, at let's say uh, this value right here, if we get uh, if we give an epsilon value of one, so if f epsilon equals to one, we draw we could draw a line like that, and if we draw a line downwards, we're gonna get our n value of one because one divided by one is is basically one. That's our n value. So what this is saying, yeah, what this is saying basically that this function, if we call this uh, f of x right here or one over x, so then this function here minus the uh, minus the zero, which is the limit right here. 
So from here to here, this is, well, f of x minus 0, or just f of x. Because in this case, we're not, yeah, this is, since limit is 0, and since epsilon is greater than 0, we don't have a second uh, epsilon down here. We just look at the top part right here. So then this right here is going to be, well, uh, less than this uh, epsilon, which in this case is 0.1. I mean, uh, is 1, not 0.1. So then if we made epsilon even smaller, let's say 0.5. So if epsilon is uh, equal to 0.5, then we know that uh, that x is going to be greater than 1 over 0.5. And this one is just, yeah, and this one, well, we could just uh, simplify this as 1 over 1 over 2. And that's just equals to 2. And this is our end value. So then it's even smaller right here. So if we draw this line right here, and I, here I just erased all the other uh, lines to make it easier to see. Yeah, and I've also just extended this one out right here. So basically, if this is if epsilon is 0.5, then our n value is going to be well right over here, which is equal to two, and it's getting larger. So remember, n is getting larger as as epsilon is getting smaller, and now this is even closer to the zero. So for anywhere greater than this two or this n value, we have again, once again, the uh, inequality or the definition applies, and we'll have that this f of x minus the zero absolute value is less than, well, is 0.5, only for yeah, whenever we have x is greater than two, in this case right here, because uh, this, this is right here, this is 0.5. So this line right here where the y value or epsilon equals 0.5, that is the, uh, that's basically what our epsilon is, and it's going to be less than it. But if we make this even smaller, so the idea is if, if we make it even smaller, let's say uh, epsilon is equal to 0 0.0001, etc., we still have an n value. So n is going to be equal to 1 divided by 0 0.0001, which equals, yeah, which equals 10,000, actually. So what this is saying is that it doesn't matter what this value is. You can make it as small as you want. We're still going to have an n value, and we're still going to get smaller and smaller than this, this delta. So then the limit exists, and we, so then thus we have a horizontal asymptote. And that is basically approaching the zero. So this is the visual proof. Well, anyways, that's all for today. Hopefully you learned from this abstract example. Well, anytime you deal with precise definition of limits, it's pretty abstract just to get the concept around your head, but it's intuitively it just it's pretty straightforward just once you get your head around it. Well, that's all for today. Uh, remember to watch example one in the video link below to get a better idea on this. And uh, yeah, remember you can always download these notes in the Dropbox link below and stay tuned for another math easy solution.